Hi, welcome to this introduction to interpretable machine learning with LIME. LIME is a technique that provides explanations for the predictions of any machine learning classifier. Today, we are going to understand how it works. But before that, <clears throat> I want to highlight the importance of interpretability, especially in the context of machine learning. And uh, I will go I'm going to do it with some examples. So if we have a machine learning model that is able to predict the presence of a pathology with very high accuracy, that's great. However, we should not blindly trust that model, but instead it will be great to have an idea of what are the attributes or what are the symptoms of a patient that produce certain <clears throat> pathology. Um, or in another example, if we have a model that predicts with very good uh, accuracy the cost of insurance premium, uh, only the cost or the final value or the, predict the predicted value uh, is not enough sometimes, and it will be good to understand what are the attributes of the vehicle, the driving, the driver, and that change the uh, cost of insurance premium. So in addition to the final predicted value, we want to understand how the values that we input to my machine learning model affect that predicted output. In the field of computer vision, in this example, some researchers predict, uh, trained a model to differentiate uh, between pictures of wolves and huskies, and they got great results, but they were a little surprised because this is a difficult task. So when they checked uh, their model, they realized that the model was not differentiating between wolves and huskies, but instead it was differentiating between pictures with, uh, with and without the snow, which means that of course, pictures will know have a higher chance of having walls on it. So they, there was a data spilling process because the, the machine learning model was not predicting what it was supposed to predict. Instead, it was predicting something else. So for machine learning interpretability, there are several techniques that have been proposed. And this book by Christoph Molder uh, presents a very detailed explanation of them. I recommend that this is a great book that you can find on GitHub. And about Lime, it was originally proposed in this paper uh, that right now, at, as today, uh, today's date, has this high number of citations. And the library that they released on GitHub has a high number of stars too, which suggests that it has a good level of acceptance in the machine learning community. Now, Lime uh, is an acronym that means Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations. So this explanation, local in this context means that the explanations that we get are at the individual level. So we cannot make global inferences about the entire data set, but instead we just look at one individual at a time. Interpretable means that we want explanations that we as humans can interpret. Because for example, in the case of neural networks, we know that the weights of the neural network provide information about the classification, but these are not necessarily, we can, we, as humans, when we have millions of weights, we cannot understand them. Model agnostic means that a line works for any machine learning algorithm. And uh, the library that they release right now works with text, image, and tabular data. So this is great because we are not limited by the use of only one, <clears throat> one algorithm. And explanations is what we want to get at the end of the day. So for the example of tabular data, we have that we have as an example, we have a model that predicts if a mushroom is poisonous or not based on the attributes, odor, size. And then Lime is able to tell us, hmm, I think that you are getting this prediction of poisonous because of these attributes of the mushroom. And for text, we input a text to a machine learning model. And then Lime tells us, hey, I think you are getting the prediction of atheism in this case because of these words that I am highlighting. So this is how it works for text. And for images, basically it uh, tells us, for, for example, I think the, the, the machine learning model tells us here is a Labrador in this image and Lime tells us, I think the model is telling you that because of this region and the image. So this is the way how Lime presents explanations. So the way Lime works is that it fields a local, a simpler model that is usually a linear model around the instance to be explained. So this image is a little confusing uh, at the beginning, but let's take a look at the Python code to see how it works. So in my website, artiagasi.github.io in the blog section, you can find this post interpretable machine learning, which is a, Py and a Python notebook that you can open in Google Collab if you want, and or you can just download it and you can play with it and see how it works. Basically, I'm just importing some utilities for data manipulation. I Here I am opening this uh, data set that contains, uh, that I created manually. And this data set contains two variables, x1 and x2. And the output is 
is y, which is binary, zero or one. So I am what I am doing here is I just ex extract the x and y values into NumPy arrays, and then I standardize the data to avoid issues with the with the magnitude or the units of the variables. It's a common practice in machine learning. Now, when I plot the data, I get that for each x1 and x2, I get a specific class, which in this case is a gray or darker gray. Now we can try a machine learning classifier to try to resemble this, this uh, data generation process or these decision boundaries. And then I am going, I used uh, a random forest classifier and to, uh, to measure or to assess how good this uh, random forest predicts the, the data or the data generation process, I just make a mesh grid, which is just a, a lot of points in a range of a plot. And then I get those values of, as X and I classify with the classifier I trained before, what is the prediction for those points? And then I can get a plot like this. And if you take a look, you can see that this uh, imitates, let's say very well, the data generation process that we originally had. So we can assume that there is high accuracy in this, uh, in this random forest uh, prediction. So now the way line works is that we want to explain one instance at a time. So the instance we want to explain, we call it xi, and it is x1 equal to 0 0.8 and x2 minus 0 0.7. So here it is represented as a blue dot. What we do is that in the step one, we start by generating random perturbations around the instance that we want to explain. For tabular data, it is recommended to to sample around the mean and standard deviation of each one of the variables. But given that we standardized the data in a previous step, I can just sample with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And then I generate a certain number of perturbations. In this case, it's 500. And then at the end, I will have a new data set, uh, just a lot of x1 and x2 values, uh, 500 of those data sets specifically. And then, of course, uh, I will have a matrix that has that as, uh, the number of perturbations as rows and the same number of columns, which is two in this case, as columns. I call this data set X line. So what I can do is that I plot this data set and I can, you in the step two, I will use the classifier that I trained before, the random forest, to predict what is the output of that new data set. So I call it Y line. And then I, I call the predict function of the classifier. And when I plot the data, we can see that this is what we get, which is something similar to, to the decision boundaries that we had before. This is good. Now we have two things. We have X lime and Y lime. So the random data I generated and the output for that random data. So now I can use that to feed a linear model. However, before I feed a, before I feed a linear model, it would be great to give more importance to the instances that are closer to my point because it is supposed to be a local model, a local surrogate. So what I will do is that I will use the distance from each one of these generated points to the point that I want to explain. And then with that distance, I can give more or less importance to some of those points. So what I do, is that I just compute the Euclidean distance between the point to be explained and each one of the generated points. And I convert the, those distances to a value between zero and one using a kernel function. Now I have 500, which is the same number of samples that I generate, 500 weights. If we hear this is the shape. And when we plot that data, we have something like this. The, the green areas or the green points are uh, have higher weight because they are closer to the point to be explained. Now with these three things, the X line, the new gen the random data, the Y line, the class of that random data and the weights, I can fit a weight linear model uh, that uh, will tell me how the decision boundaries behave around this point that I want to explain. So that linear regression, this is a linear regression model that I fit with X as X line, Y as Y line and the weights that I did that I computed before. And then I just converted to a binary class because that was the original problem. And then this generates a new, the, a new data, new data boundaries, let's say. And then this boundary, as you can see here, it generates like a linear model because that is what we fitted. And on one side we have minuses and the others in the other side we have pluses. <clears throat> and these new decision boundaries tells us, a, as we can see, they are faithful only around the instance that we want to explain. So these decision boundaries can tell us information or this linear model can tell us information about why we get certain explanations. So when we look at the coefficients of the simpler model, I call the coefficients here, we can see that for X1, if we, de if we increase the value of X1, we have the probability will go towards the negative class because we have a negative sign here. 
And if we, for X2 the same, if we increase the value of X2, we will go, we have a higher probability or we will lean towards the, the negative class, which is the darker area in this, in this part. So these are the explanation that line presents at the end, which tell us more or less uh, what are the, by how much or what are the, what is the sign or the direction? And maybe also we can interpret their magnitude to analyze what, how certain variables affect the classification output. So uh, this is how line works. And uh, this is the end of the video. And thank you so much for watching.